All over the UK, theatres were wrapped in pink tape today to highlight their plight. Actors, stagehands, orchestra members, set painters, directors have been sending out an SOS to the government that not only are their livelihoods in jeopardy, cultural venues from the smallest theatre to the Royal Opera House in London are under immediate threat without a substantial financial package straight away. Only today, the National Theatre in London announced 400 casual staff are to lose their jobs. The Prime Minister said that he would set out a timetable for the arts in England next week, but there was not a hint of what funds might follow for an industry which employs more than 2 million people and generates almost £11 billion for the UK economy. In Scotland, the Culture Minister today announced a £10 million relief fund for arts venues in the country. In Wales, it's £7 million. In Northern Ireland, there's £4 million of emergency funds. In a moment, we'll talk to Nicholas Heitner, the Artistic Director of the Bridge Theatre. But first, let's go to Scotland and talk to the Artistic Director of the Pitlochry Festival Theatre, Elizabeth Newman. Elizabeth Newman, uh, good evening. Uh, you said very poetically um, that you put the theatre to sleep in order to create dreams. But Pitlochry Theatre is in a parlous position, dream or no dream, isn't it? Yeah, we are. I mean, we're incredibly grateful for the announcements today from Fiona Hislop and Nicola Sturgeon around this latest fund. The relief fund is £10 million and has been set aside to help us remain solvent until March 2021. So performing arts venues, supporting freelancers as well. It's been an incredible lifeline that they've sent out today. But that is only to keep us solvent until March 2021. They're really aware that this is just the first step that's going to be required. So, As you say, for somewhere like the Lockery Festival yeah. Theatre, it's incredibly difficult. We have to make 85% of our income. And as well as being, we hope, an artistic hub and you know one of Scotland's great producing theatres. We're also the largest employer in Highland Perthshire. So as yeah. well as having an artistic responsibility, we also have an economic yes. responsibility. And, and, and as we know, the, the cultural industries and the arts are actually in terms of GDP across the UK higher than agriculture. But I wonder yeah. without the money you have, you can keep yourself open till 2021. How do you keep the artistic vision going? How do you keep embracing the community and their involvement in the theatre? Well, we've done lots of different things. As um, you said at the beginning, I said we're going to start dreaming. So we immediately went online onto our virtual stages. And every day we produce three pieces of artistic content for audiences. And those range from pieces of opera to poetry to work for children. We also set up a telephone club. We were really aware that the audiences that come to Pit Lockery would be facing a very severe kind of shielding. So we're available to them every week. We ring people, we keep them company at home. And now what we're looking at doing is what we can do for our local community during this time when social yeah. distance... Well, I was going to, just briefly on that, Elizabeth. Um, I mean, realistically, you could open up, couldn't you, in a particular type of way and deliver a theatrical experience. We could deliver an experience, but what we couldn't do is do what we typically do, which is have people in the theatre watching a play safely right now. Mm. We modelled our auditorium for what would social distancing look like, and it would be 70 people in a 538-seater. Now, as you know, because you've been to our theatre, mm. um, that wouldn't enable us to be mm. um, a really great experience. But more than that, we would go bankrupt in a very short period yeah. of time. Thank you very much indeed. I want to turn to Nick Heitner now. Before we go on and talk about the broader uh, question of um, uh, some kind of a rescue package, financial rescue package, you were at the National for many years. 400 people went to the National today. People presumably you know. Yeah, it's, it's desperate. It's completely desperate. Um, I totally understand why it was necessary, um, but I, I, can, uh, I can only feel desperate for colleagues who've lost, who've lost their jobs. But we're, we're four months in, and it seems that arts and culture, there have been warm words, there's going to be a timetable and so forth, but actually there's no money coming into theatre. We, we've just heard that. So how critical is this? How terminal is it? 
No, we're, we are right at the critical point now. Um, I do believe, I have heard, that this is something that Oliver Dowdin and Rishi Sunak are taking seriously. But unless there is a substantial, unprecedented rescue package as part of the July statement, uh, the Chancellor's July statement next week, we're really looking at waves of insolvencies, waves of redundancies. Uh, we're looking at the whole ecosystem breaking down. We're not just talking about theatres. We're talking about uh, concert venues, large and small gigs. We're talking about community arts, circus. We're talking about classical and popular music. All this, this, this is a massive, massive generating force for the economy at large, as well as being absolutely at this. 75% of people visit some kind of cultural event every year. This is, this is not to do with any kind of minority interest. Oh. No, and in fact, if you look, take something like pantomime, which you know is, is the lifeblood of regional theatre, it yeah. gets people into the very idea often of going to a theatrical experience. It and does. It'll all be dark. It, they will. They will all be dark, and it will cost countless millions uh, in redundancy payments. It will count. It would cost countless millions. Uh, I've heard the word mothball being chucked around in the last couple of days. It, it it would be money spent on closing things down where money could be spent on investing in the future. So, and I so think you that's need what this. I, I mean, are you needing this in a matter of days? The end of next week? I mean... Well, I, do, do you saw today the National had to make 400 casual yeah. staff redundant. Uh, great institutions, small institutions are simply going to go to the wall. That will cost a fortune in in uh, in monetary capital as well as of course in human capital there are there are freelance artists who are absolutely dependent on money coming in in order to survive uh, we, we are at risk of chucking all that away so you have you have the question of the industry yes but in fact where does the industry sit in terms of actually the societal contribution that arts and culture makes. I mean, well, obviously, I, I think it's incalculable, but it is undoubtedly a huge economic multiplier. But but it is also one of the things which the UK has a global reputation for, and it's the, soft power as well. It, it's it's soft power. I think this is a, a, a really conservative. I I would like to address through you uh, conservatives mm. and say why do you not? Why would you not? I believe they do. Why would you not want to preserve British culture? There are rescue uh, packages that have been established all over Europe. Italy, for instance, has announced 5 billion euros for culture and tourism. Why would we want our culture to perish where it is flourishing in the rest of Europe? That's, that, that's a question mm -hmm. that I genuinely think should resonate with Conservatives. I, I genuinely think that Rishi Sunak should get that. I, I believe that he does, and I, I hope that he does. But in terms of um, you know, the, the, the getting out artistic uh, endeavor going again. Yeah. I mean, you talk about you know things going, you know, maybe going dark permanently. Yeah. When will you ever be able to ramp up again? It takes a long time to create work, to get directors, no, to get that, writers. That obviously in. has to. That obviously has to start happening now. I, it, it, Do we need to be more fleet of foot if you get going again? I, th I think there are ways. But listen, we know that there is pain coming our way. Pain has come our way. We're not trying to duck that. We've been uh, many of us. It's a very diverse sector. Mm. Not every theatre, not every arts institution is in exactly the same position. Uh, we're aware of that. A lot of us have been helping ourselves. My own theatre company produced Alan Bennett's Talking Heads yeah. for the BBC. We're doing our best here. Uh, but uh, we have. To, th this is a question I would like to ask, because there are some of us who could, if, if investment is unlocked, we could unlock all kinds of creative things. What's the difference between an aeroplane and a theatre? Why is it safe to fly six abreast for four hours to Greece, but not safe to sit in a socially distanced audience in a theatre. I, I don't understand that. Briefly, you talked about investment. Obviously, you want government investment, you yeah. want state investment. What about the banks? Oh, well, that's the story, Kirsty. I can tell you the banks are not lending. If there's one thing that the government could do, it's lean on the bank. I could, I could come back someday and name names. They could lean on the banks to start lending. The C-bill scheme is not working. I know this for a fact. Nick Heitner, thanks very much. We will have you back. Thank you.